Good morning and welcome to Wilmington Christian Center Church. It's a great day to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, how wonderful it is to praise and worship our Lord. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So today's message brought by the man of God, Pastor Phil, will bless you and cause your faith in God to rise. So let's prepare our hearts for today's service and a life-changing faith message. So praise God. We will now hear prayer from Sister Aranda. Amen, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you once again today, God, just to glorify your precious name, just to say thank you, God, for being a forgiving God who forgives us of all of our iniquities and our transgressions, oh God, all of our wrong thoughts, wrong actions, wrong words spoken, oh God, all of our wrong perceptions, oh God. I thank you, God, that when we come to you, God, in repentance, oh God, asking for your forgiveness, oh God, you don't even remember it for another second. Oh God. So I thank you for your forgiveness today, oh God. I thank you, God, for life, health, and strength, oh God, and that more abundantly, oh God. I thank you, God, that your word is the way, the truth, and the life, oh God. I thank you, God, that your word of truth is going to go forth today, oh God, with Holy Ghost boldness and with power, oh God. I thank you, God, that it is a word that is going to heal, set free, and deliver today, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for the songs, oh God, of worship, oh God, that are going to enter us into your presence that much more, oh God. But Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, to give us a fresh anointing today, oh God, not the one that we woke up with this morning, oh God, but one that will have us latch on to you like we never have before, oh God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you have your way in us through us and with us on this day, oh God, and we will continually glorify your precious name because we are one in you and you are one with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So Father God, we just want to say thank you. We want to bless your name today. We want to glorify you. We want to magnify you and not our situations, not our problems and not our circumstances, oh God. We will praise you at all times, oh God, and it will continue continually be in our mouths. The rocks will never have a reason to cry out for us because we will praise you in all things and through all things. You are the faithful God who is faithful just because you promised you would be. So speak through your servant today, put hot coals to his mouth, oh God, that he will speak with thus saith the Lord to his people, oh God. And Lord Jesus, we are ready to receive your word so that we can be blessed and highly favored and continue, oh God, to work in the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that I come to you with thanksgiving in my heart and in my soul, amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh gosh, hallelujah. Sorry about that. All right. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. What time is it? It's a time for favor. Yes. It's the season for the favor of the Lord. It's the season for the As for me, I receive. I am blessed to be a blessing. I have a promise, yes. Shit, it's my season. It's my season. It's my time. Help me say, help me say, it's the season for the favor of the Lord. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am 
Your 
your hands This is my confidence You never fail Say that again The promise there is stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness <laughs> And I'm still in your hands This is my confidence Never fail me yet. Oh no, you never fail me yet. No. <laughs> you see, he's a mountain moving God. Whatever stands between you and him has to be moved. So I say, I see you move. You move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. I believe I'll see you do it again. I've seen you move, yes, I have. You move the mountains right out of my way. I believe. Ha. I see you do it again. You made a way as yes, you did when there was no way. I believe. Ha. I see you do it again. I see your move. You move the mountains, and I believe. I see you do it again. You made a way as yes, you did when there was no way. I believe, come on, say it. I see you do it again. Come on, you know this. Say that with me. You move the mountains. And I believe. I see you do it again. You made a way, yes you did, when there was no way. And I believe, come on. I see you do it again. I see you move. I've seen you move. I've seen you move. I've seen you move. You made a way. Woo! You made a way. You made a way. I've seen you do it again. Yes. Yes, I will. Right before my very eyes. I've seen you do it again. Nothing can stand between me and my God. If God is with you, who can be against you? I've seen you do it again. I'll see you do it again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to continue on in that same spirit of worship. Hallelujah. Right where you are, go ahead and lift your hands to God. Give him your all. Praise God. Our Lord and our Savior, he's worthy of this praise. All in that name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And we're not ashamed of him today. Thank you, God. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you are here with me. When I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of the shadow, I will not fear, I am not alone, I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, I am not alone. I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me. Glory to God. So in the midst of deep sorrow, I see your light.
light is breaking through. Glory to God. The dark of night won't overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you fight my every battle. And I will not fear, for I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. Believe me, you amaze me, you redeem me, you call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me, you call me as your own. You amaze me, you redeem me, you call me as your own. You amaze me, you redeem me. Call me as you are. You are my strength. You are my defender. You are my refuge in the storm. And through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to my soul, and I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me, Lord, I am not alone, I am not alone. You will go before me, yeah, you will never leave me. I am not alone, I am not alone. You will go before me, you will never leave me me my God so faithful are you Lord so faithful are you Lord so faithful are you Lord to me oh faithful are you Lord so faithful are you Lord hallelujah so faithful are you Lord to me Hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank those in that worship. Woo. Powerful. You don't know how much it lines up with the word today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Have, do you have your expectation up today? Mm, something good is going to happen to you today, and it will. So I need you to get your spiritual catches wide open. Expect to receive from God today. I need you to stop moving around. I need you to focus. God has a word for you today. Don't think you already know it. Don't think, don't assume that this will be something you've heard before. Well, if you're hearing it again, that's because you didn't hear it the first time. Expect something good from God today. Come on, let's pray. Father, I turn my notes over to you, my thoughts over to you. Holy Spirit, you're our teacher and guide. Have your way in us. Whew. We recognize we're not alone, Father. We recognize you are faithful. So, Father, in the midst of the great turbulence that's in the world, and some of us have challenges in our life, you have a word for us. So we receive for the nourishment of our mind, our will, our emotions, and our spirit man, your word, your confirmation. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. You know, we've been staying on this scripture, John 15. And I, you know, you know, I, the Lord has put this scripture in my heart for us to focus on. Glory be to God. 
And so turn to your Bible to John 15, verses 1 to 5. We'll look at verse 16. You should know it by now. You know, sometimes when you get a word from, you know, from the faith coming by hearing, how can you hear unless you hear the preaching word? You should meditate on this during the week because you're called to bear fruit. In John 15, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that and, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, verse 4, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can you except you abide in him. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Let's look at verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Let's go back to verse 5. I've been focusing on this the last couple of teachings. He says, for without me, you can't do nothing. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, when we leave him, you know, this scripture is telling us when we leave him, we cannot be blessed. You know, God freely gives us everything we need to walk with him and produce the fruit he has already planned in our lives. He's already planned your success. He's already planned your success for you. It's already been done. Glory be to God. He hath already blessed you with all spiritual blessings. But when we, when we go to our own thinking, when we go to what we think is right, when we listen to others instead of him, we leave him and we miss our blessing. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Come on, open your Bible there. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. He says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Woo! We're to know who, are, who is our source. We're supposed to know who our true helper is. You understand? The world can't tell us that. You understand? He, God's given it to his people. And we're supposed to know this. We're supposed to believe this. Who? We're supposed to know who our source is, who our true helper is. You remember Jarius? And I'm using this in point because we're in challenging times right now. I mean, l listen, racial disharmony, sickness and disease, COVID-19 or whatever, and other diseases that are there. You understand? Violence in the cities. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm not giving praises for that. I'm just sharing with you. You understand? Uh, people are unemployed. You understand? Prices are going up. I mean, you can't even, if a loved one leaves, you can't even, you can't, you, you know, you can't go to the funeral together. I mean, everything is set up for failure, for fear, Glory, but we have a helper. Glory be God. Jarius was dealing with this. You heard me preach on Jarius. He went and asked God to heal his, heal his daughter. And, and while he got, Jesus was on his way to his house to heal his daughter, he, get, he, he gets this message. Turn to Mark. I'm, I'm, pre I'm preaching from Mark 5, uh, 35. He says, while he yet spake, there came from the rule of the synagogue house certain which said, certain which said, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? What he asked for, God, appears it factually that it would not, it would not come, that it had not arrived, that it would not be fulfilled. How many times that happens to you? You're believing God and then some facts or some worldly reality come and say, you can't get it. You've been turned down three times from getting a car that you believe is yours. And he comes back and said, there's no way you can get it. No way it's going to work. Glory be God. But look what Jesus said in, in, in Mark 5, 36. He, soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. Who? Who do you focus on when trouble or challenging times come? I like another translation of this, and it's the New Living on verse 36. But Jesus overheard them and said to Jarius, don't be afraid, just have faith. <laughs> Woo! They tell you your kid is dead, the one you love. And Jesus says he overhears them telling them. 
Don't be afraid, just have faith. Don't be afraid, only believe. You know, you may have the word, you know, a lot of us get a word when we're going through, but, but, what a, but who do you focus on in your challenging times? Many of us get a word. God will send the word to you. You going? Some of you are going through some stuff right now, and God has sent the word for you. But the question is, who do you focus on? What do you focus on during this time? What do you focus on during challenging times? Because the word's going to come. You understand? He chose you. He's going to bring that word to you. Glory be to God. He's going to bring the truth. Remember, facts can never override truth, but truth override facts. You understand? See, I, you got to have an attitude expecting from God. I love talking about David. You know, David had an attitude that always raised his altitude. That's right. He always had an attitude that raised his altitude. He had an attitude, you know, about who God is. He carried a little chip on his shoulder. Who? Who God is. And if you look at Psalm 62, and then let's look at, uh, let's look at verse, come on, turn your Bible, Psalm 62. Come on, flow with us today. Glory be to God. There's a word for you here today. One word from God will change your life. And so many of us are going through some challenging times. You understand? We're, yes, we're in the end times. You understand? Well, yes, we are. But sometimes it looks like there is no hope. But there's a word. And then Psalm 62, verse 5 and 6. My soul, here's David talking. Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Notice, listen, David is talking to himself. Remember, the book of Psalms was Psalms. He wrote the song. He's talking to himself. My, my mind, will, and emotions. His soul, my mind, my will, and emotions. Wait thou only upon God for my expectation from him. He is my rock and my salvation. That means salvation, deliverer, Whew. helper. <laughs> pull you out of trouble. He is my defense. He protects me. He defends me. I shall not be moved. Glory. He's talking to himself. Glory be to God. Woo. Oh, he's talking to himself. Now, now, now I, want, I want to look at the, I was studying this, and let's look at the Young's literal translation of this. And I believe it's going to bring a word to you as it brought to me. When I was reading this and studying this, and the Lord said, he, he was telling me, he said, people's expectation are so low, they can quote scriptures, but they don't expect it to come to pass. And so he, he here, and, and, and because we're moved by our feelings too much. But look at Psalm 62, verse 1 and 2 in the Young's Literal Translation. It says, only toward God is my soul silent. And I'm going for verses 1 to 2. From him is my salvation. Only he is my rock and my salvation, my tower. I am not moved. Look at that word, only on him. Only, glory be to God, hallelujah. Only God, who is my soul. Only him. Glory, the Young's literal puts, the, puts that word only in there, only. He's saying only soul, quit looking around, looking at the bills. Quit looking around at your symptoms. Quick looking around at the bad report. Only God. Come on, say that with me. Only God. Come on, say it out loud. Only God. Woo. Only him. See, we're supposed to look only on him. Only on what he says. Only on what he provides. Only what he says. Only what he, he gives us. Only him. Look at verses 5 and 6 where we just read. In, in the King James Version, my soul, he's talking. Notice what it says, that only for God, be silent, O oh my soul. For God, you have to be silent. For him, for, for from him is my only hope. Verse 6, only he is my rock and my salvation, my tower. I am not moved. Notice the word only for God. He said, only for God, you better be silent, my soul. For from him is my hope. Glory be to God. Only he is my rock and my salvation. My tower, I am not moved. Who is your only? <laughs> only. You know, when Peter was walking on the water 
how quickly Peter went down when he took his focus off of Jesus. See, our faith produces supernatural results when our focus is on him and our focus is on his word. Only God. There should be no else. Only the news. Only people. Only my mother. No, only God. You have to make a choice today. Your soul and pressures of life can be so loud. Sometimes you got too much, yes, too much loudness. You know, we're going to talk about then your mistakes, your soul, see your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. I mean, the yelling and the pressures of life, they can be so, they can be so loud. Pressures of life don't have enough money. Pressures of life, family in disharmony. Pressures of life, COVID-19. Pressures of life, unemployment, no jobs. Pressures of life, prices are going up. Pressures of life. But see, you can't see your healing looking at your symptoms. You can't see your provision looking at your bills. You have to look at the only one who can provide for you. And the only one is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. The only one is the Lord, your God, who takes care of you. Glory be to God. Come on, let's continue with Psalms. I love talking about David because his attitude was what I'm working on your attitude so your it'll raise your altitude. It'll have you look to the hills. It'll have you looking up instead of looking down. It has you looking up instead of looking across. God doesn't need you to look at the diagnosis. No, he wants you to only look at him. Those are facts, but they're not the truth. <laughs> I've been on this for a while. There has to be biblical. You have to seek biblical solutions to everything you're going through. Your children are acting crazy. Find a biblical solution. There's a word for you. Your spouse and you, the marriage is rocky. Find a biblical solution. It's there for you. Unexpected things happen like death and things of that nature. Find a biblical solution. Only God. He knew these things will occur. He prophesied things like this would happen through his prophets. Only God. Woo, glory be to God. Come on, say that with me. Only God. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through. Only God. I don't know what, what, what's happening in your life. Only God. That's all. You, it has to be only, only God. Look at Psalms 146. Glory be to God. It says, praise the Lord. Yes, really praise him. I'm reading from the Living, Living Bible. Praise the Lord. Yes, really praise him. Uh, turn, to, turn to yourself and say, I need to really praise him. You know, sometimes we praise him and we, we say, hallelujah, glory be to God. And we throw a hand up. No, I, I'm talking about really praise him. That's what God's looking for, a real praise. Not one of them fake ones. You understand? I will praise him as long as I live. Yes, even when my with my dying breath, I will praise God. Imagine someone on their dying breath praising God as they go out. Hallelujah. Don't look to men. Look at verse 3. <laughs> Don't look to men for help. Their greatest leaders fall. Mm, mm, mm. Don't look to men for help. The greatest leaders fall. Look at verse, verse 3. Let's look at the uh, complete Jewish Bible. And it says here, don't put your trust in princes or in mortals who cannot help. <laughs> do not look, in other words, do not look for men to help you. Do not look for the government to help you. Do not look for other people to help you. Well, Pastor, somebody, a person was used, but when you look to God, he'll, he'll, he'll use the right people. But he doesn't need you to look to the people. He needs you to look to God. I tell the story of the time my wife and I, we, we, we believe strongly in sowing seed. And, we, and we, years ago, somebody was going to a ministry and the Lord put upon our, our heart, my wife's heart especially, and it was agreement with me to pay for their plane fare and, and for them to go. And we sowed the seed. Well, that person, had, she was just testifying about, man, I had talked to God and y'all did it. Well, the next time that same trip came again, she started looking at us. Well, I want you to know, you know, um, I'm going again, and, you know, if y'all want to bless me, no. She, she, she forgot she needed to look at him. She didn't put her trust in us. She had to put her trust in him. <laughs> Glory be to God. 
We don't look for man to help us. We don't look for the government to bail us out. Glory be to God. You understand? <laughs> some of us are. Well, some of us, we get angry and we're blaming. We get fearful. We get upset with the government and, and the people. You know, and, and the more we read the papers, we look at the news concerning things. You understand? And the more we look at these things, the more we, we, put, we get into this thinking if, if, the, if the government hadn't done this, we wouldn't be in this situation. Da-da-da, da-da-da. You see, the more we look at those things, the less God is real to us. The more we buy into what the world looks at, the more we do, the less God is real to us. The more you look at <laughs> what's causing the racial disharmony, the less God is real to us. We know who it is. It's the devil. <laughs> it's that simple. He breaks, he kills, steal, and destroy. He divides. He'll use whatever person he can use. You understand what I'm saying? To, 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 to just destroy the world. They have no presence of God. Glory. But the more I look at people, the more I look at this, like they're my savior, that if we make this change, it's going to make a difference. The less God is real to you. Glory be to God. <laughs> uh, here's another translation of, of Psalms 146.3. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. My, my job, my, I'm not here putting my power uh, on the senators and governors to make a change for my life. I don't, you understand? There's no cop. They will disappoint you. They will disappoint you. Glory be to God. Look at verse 5 of 146. This is where we did, but happy is the man who has the God of Jacob as his helper, whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Woo, only God. Only God. But happy is the man or woman who has the God of Jacob as his helper. Because God got Jacob out of a lot of mess. Whose hope is in the Lord, his God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, another translation says, but joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Notice, their hope is in the Lord their God. Whew. See, you can tell if God is real to you, that when negative circumstances or pressures of life come upon you, you, you sometimes we put pressure on people. See, faith puts no pressure on people. I'll say that again. Faith put no blame on people to where they, where they are in this situation. Faith puts no, you know, puts no blame on people to resolve their situation. Faith doesn't do that. Faith doesn't blame the president, the senators, the Congress, or the governor for where they are in life. Faith doesn't do that. Faith is rest. Faith is looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. <coughs> That's what faith is. Every time you put your trust and confidence in people, even yourself, You'll be, you said, you'll be disappointed. He didn't ask you to put confidence in yourself. He asked you to put confidence in him. He didn't ask you to, you to put confidence in your mama. He asked you to put confidence in him. He is your source. Only God. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. And you have to understand, hope and faith are twins. You can't have faith without hope, and you can't have hope without faith. They go together. You know, the definition of hope is a confident expectation of God providing something good. Let me take my time here. That's what, that's what hope is, a confident expectation of God providing something good. That's where your hope is. We're, we're relying on a God who cannot fail us. A God who is always faithful. Only God. Only God. Lord, do you have a confident expectation, where you're at right now, of God providing something good for you? I know what the doctor said. I understand. I understand where your children are at. And you're not pleased. But do you have a confident expectation of something good from your God concerning that situation? Whew. Praise God. I don't think we praise him enough. Hallelujah. We don't praise him enough. We fake a praise. You understand? Sometimes you have to keep praising till those thoughts of, of those feelings 
subside. That's what praise is. David praised and praised and praised. You understand? So it, when you start praising him, those thoughts will stop. Yes, praise him. Glory be to God. He is faithful. That's why it's only God. He's faithful. Look at Deut Deuteronomy 7.9. Come on, come on. Let your fingers do the walking. Deuteronomy 7, 9. It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Woo! Boy, that just gets me excited. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Look at the Amplified of this same scripture. Look at the Amplified translation. Therefore, know without a doubt and understand that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who is keeping the covenant and his steadfast loving kindness to a thousand generations. For a thousand generations, you understand, he, he is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same to you. Somebody, somebody read the Bible, well, you know, Pastor, that was just in the Bible. No, that when, when God did something in the Bible, you understand, and he blessed people, is telling you that since you're a part of those same people, I will bless you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He's faithful. Glory be to God. Paul talked about it in the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 9. He said, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We were called. Didn't we just read in, in, in uh, John 15, verse 6? I called you, I chose you, and ordained you, separated you, whoo, by my word. And that, that look what Paul is saying. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son. Look at the Amplified translation of this. Tra the, the, the Amplified Bible concerning verse 9. God is faithful. He is reliable. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Whoo, trustworthy and ever true to his promise. He can be depended on. And through him, you were called into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is faithful. Come on, say that with me. My God is faithful. I can't hear you. My God is faithful. My God is reliable. Come on. My God is trustworthy. My God is true to his promise. My God can be depended on. Come on. Only God. Woo. Glory. And these challenges we're facing, only God. He is faithful. You know, so, you know faithfulness. <laughs> See, God is faithful and loyal. Sometimes you think you could rely on somebody. How many of you relied on people? And I'm telling you, that they disappointed you. How many of you put your trust in people? And they fail you. When God is looking for you to put trust, you put your trust in him. Thank you, Lord. See, as a faithful God, this is what he promises. He promised to take care of those whom he entered into covenant. And you are in covenant with him. He, As a faithful God, he promised to supply all your necessities. Glory be to God. As a faithful God, he promised to fulfill all your desires. As a faithful God, he promised to deliver you from afflictions, troubles, and adversities. As a faithful God, he promises to never abandon you or leave you hopeless or helpless. Woo, glory be to God. We have a faithful God. He promises this to you. Oh, yeah, we can know the scripture, but do you believe the scripture? When the pressures of life come, what are you focused on? Only God or only on something else? See, you have to refuse to, to let discouragement come into your life when th when things you got to refuse this you know what you got to stop getting discouraged when things aren't going the way you plan when things look impossible when things look difficult when things look hopeless that's when god does some of his best work that's when he does that's the time you need only god that's the time you need to be praising him yes praising him that's the time you receive your strength through joy but you've got to refuse to get discouraged when things look impossible, when it doesn't look like God's coming through. 
It's just a setup by the enemy. You know, he knows, glory be to God. He knows if you only into only God, he, there's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can come against you with. Because on this earth, you're going to get the God results. You understand? And during these impossible and difficult times, that's when God does his best work. Woo. And you got to have your attitude. And I'm giving you scriptures here that you can meditate on after this broadcast. Because some of you are going through some stuff. You're trying to resolve things without biblical solutions. You understand? It is not only God. You're trying to be only God part way and then looking for, for man to help you the other way. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, David was going through some things once, and I believe Psalms 31, 21. Look what David said. He says, praise the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his unfailing love. He kept me safe when my city was under attack. He's under attack. He's just praising God. He See, God's love never fails. God is love. He loves you <laughs> before he even before you were born. Oh, he he's he loves you. He's in love with you. He is love. And he'll keep you safe when you're under when you're under attack. Glory be to God. If you get a hold of this, he'll keep you safe in the, in the midst of this COVID-19. You and your family. Glory be to God. Look at Psalms 89, 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him nor suffer my faithfulness to fall. Here's God speaking. God says he will not allow his faithfulness to fail. He will not allow his faithfulness to fail. Have you realized now that, you know, have you ever noticed that, you know, you can't fix all your problems? Has that come across you, into your life yet? Have you realized? You understand? Doing things, trying to fix the your problem, all you're doing is putting band-aids band -aids over an open wound. That's why we have only God. This is your time to become completely dependent on God. L look, at, look at another translation of, of Psalms 89, 33. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not break off from him nor allow my faithfulness to fail, to lie, and be false to him. He's telling you, my faithfulness will never come, never be a lie to you. It'll never be false to you. If I said something, number, I'm not like man who lies. I'm not like man who can't be dependent on. I'm God. I am not mortal. And when I give a promise, it will not return back void. It will accomplish the purpose it was sent to do, to deliver you, to heal you, to provide provision for you. Glory be to God. See, this is your time to become completely dependent on God. No longer dependent on anyone or anything but him. Only him. Come on, say that with me. Only him. This is your time in the midst of what's going on in this world. This is your time. And I can, I can attest to you, and I'll say this. And, and with boldness that things will get worse, <laughs> but not to believers. We're the salt of the earth because we have only God. Come on, say that with me, only God. So many of us are angry with government and the word. Would you please back up? Only God. He's my source. Glory be to God. You know, Jeremiah 17, 5, turn your Bible to Jeremiah 17, 5. Come on, if you got your family member, turn to them. If you're in the midst of a situation, say, only God. Hallelujah. Look at Jeremiah 17, verse 5. He says, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. See, trusting people, looking to people, looking to government, to, to, you understand, to supply your needs is a curse. You understand? He's talking about this is a curse. You're walking in the curse when you put your trust in man. You're walking in the, uh, in the curse when you're focusing on a person to deliver you, where it gets you so upset with them. Only God. 
You don't want to walk in the curse. You don't want to come across that you're so dependent upon the government. You're walking in the curse. Curse is the man. Jesus redeemed us from the curse. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Look at Jeremiah 17, 6. They see, this is the results that would happen. For he shall be, he's talking about those who look to, look to man. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabit it. It's happened to me on, I mean, on many occasions when I take my eyes off God. I, I can tell you a testimony of where I took my eyes off God. I couldn't see good coming because all I saw was the bad. All I saw was it wasn't going to work, that there was no hope. All I saw, you understand, uh, you understand, I, and, uh, I, all I saw was the negativity side of it, of the circumstances. I saw the facts. I like the passion translation of this verse six. They are like stunted shrubs in the desert mm, with no hope for the future. That's right. You have no hope for the future. <laughs> And when you're trusting people, he said they will live in the barren wilderness in an uninhabited, salty land. Glory, you know, the land salty, it has no rain. It cannot be successful. Glory. Glory. You see, trusting people, looking to people to supply your needs, it's a curse. And if God is my source, whew, you understand? Listen to me carefully. If God is my is your source, he has a million ways for you to have results. A million ways to bring results to you. Glory. Come on, say that with me. If God is my source, he has a million ways for me to have blessed results. Come on, say that again. If God is my source, he has a million ways for me to have blessed results. It don't matter what you go through. Woo. You understand? God has so many ways to bring, bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So many ways to bring provision for you and provision to you. We read in the Bible, he, he used birds to bring provision. He'll do whatever it takes. He has so many ways. He's unpredictable, but predictable. He's unpredictable about how he's going to do it, but predictable that he will definitely do it. He is faithful to you. Glory be to God. Come on, say that with me. He's faithful. I know I've been looking at this problem in the past for a long time. My hand isn't working. This is it. But he is faithful. Only God. Only God. Sometimes we give up. I've seen parents sometimes, they'll listen to, listen to the doctors concerning their children and say, this is the way they're going to be. And we forget that there's only God. You know, and for years it looks that way. And so they put all their facts into hoping there's a cure here and hoping it with that. See, I'm not looking for a cure for COVID-19. I'm looking for his healing. Because man's, man's cure doesn't take the sickness away. Only God can take the sickness away. So my, I look to God. And even if they come up with some scientific cure, praise God but it won't stop the disease. God does. Hallelujah. You understand? There's people who have taken, um, taken flu shots and still got the flu. But God does. Only God. Woo, hallelujah. I don't, want, I don't want to walk in the curse. See, our hope has to be on him. So your focus during times now must be on his word, must be on him. You know, God said in, in Mark 5, 16, 4, 16, he says, the sower sow the word. That's what we're doing here today. We're sowing word in you through the Holy Ghost. I've turned my notes over to you, over to him. He's sowing a word in you. Glory be to God. He's sowing a word of only him. And I don't care what's happened in your life. You know, people, we go through some challenging times. And the New Testament, especially, and I, I want to talk about if you lost loved ones, you have to focus on the New Testament. Not as, in the Old Testament, they grieved for a long time. But see, in the New, <laughs> you understand, joy comes. God wants you to move forth. When Jesus lost his, his cousin, John the Baptist, who he grew up with, who he loved, 
it, and for a moment he grieved. He went away. But then he he pay, he said, I'm going to pay the devil back for this. You know what he did? He went to a city and preached the gospel and healed people. He said, I'm going to pay you back. That's what some of you need to do right now. I'm going to pay you back for this loss because by doing God's will. I'm going to pay you back, devil, especially some people left before their time. I'm going to pay you back. Pay back. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to do the will of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Only God. I'm so in word in you today. Only God. And so, and so while we're looking at only God, we also, I talked about this a little last, a little teaching last week. While we, we have to make sure that we don't get robbed. You understand? So we can move forth. And the devil likes to rob you of your faith, rob you of your blessing. And you know, remember, we're here to, we're here to bring, we're here to bring forth fruit. In other words, God's plans in our life are supposed to be there, supposed to be seen, evident. And many of us are robbed from being fruitful because of the, because, and I talked about guilt, but it was sometimes because of regret, regret. You understand? Regret is feeling of sorrow and an act or fault or disappointment that we experienced in the past. We regret. I regret that I, this happened to me. I regret I met her. I regret we did this. I regret. Regret gets you, gets you to thinking of something with a sense of loss. Regret always has you in the past. See, we're not perfect. And you understand, we all, every one of you have to deal with regret. From time to time, you have to deal with it. We're going to make mistakes. Some of us made some, you know, I don't know if there's great mistakes. I don't read there's great mistakes. We made mistakes. Some of us sin. Even as believers, we sin. But we can't live in regret. I'm preaching to someone here today. We have to bounce back up immediately from any acts of wrongdoing. God's looking for you to bounce back up. Why? You, you, you have to understand why. You have to understand why he's looking for you to bounce back up. I didn't say I'm looking for you. God is looking for you. When you make some of the biggest boo-boos, biggest mistakes, commit sinful acts as a believer. I said, commit sinful acts. You're not a sinner. God, who is looking for you to bounce back? He understands what it takes for you to grow in him. You get born again, and you understand, he, understand. he knows you, you were this way for 30 years. But what if you trust him, he'll undo it in 30 days, six months. He understands if you know, you, that you'll, you'll have some challenges. You understand, you still your your flesh is still dominant with you. Your soul is still dominant. And you're going to make some mistakes. You know, Revelations twelve ten, if you have it, turn there. Revelations twelve ten. I'm going to give you some answers. We're not going to be robbed from our fruitfulness. You know, I'm talking about regret because, I'm, you know, I I live, <laughs> I live a life of being regretful, until I got a hold of the Word of God and making changes in my life. I live regretting some things. You know, you regret, if only I had done this, if I did this in the ministry, or if only I had done this when I was like this, when I was young, if only I had, but man, I had a, uh, and, and I'm, I'm ministering it to it because you understand when you get delivered from something, you can minister something. Hallelujah. You understand? I, and some of you are listening to me. You know, you can, you know you're walking in it because you talk about it. You talk to yourself about it. Revelation 12, 10 says, and I heard a loud voice whew, saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now, you know what this is saying? You know, the, Satan accuses us day and night. If he can get it, you know, he accuses you of your fault. He placed the blame on you. He, he Look at what you did. All of these accusations is not from God. It's from Satan. When you have that spirit of accus, you know, accuser, and you, you can tell, you know, it isn't coming from God. He's the accuser of the brother. And it says he accuses to God day and night. Well, see, God has placed you on this earth as a king and a priest, as a little God, as a, as, as a God. Glory be to God. Some of you have a problem with that, but there's scripture on that. And so he accuses you. He'll use the spirit of regret. 
I regret I did them drugs. I can't stop on. And I'm talking about the mistakes you made yesterday. Let's make it real. Now, I'm not talking about mistakes you made before you got accept Christ. This is mistakes you made since you had Christ. So let's get the let's get that clear. That's what I'm talking about. The sins you did commit while you were born again. Sins you did to your body and did to other people while you're born again. And so the enemy likes to bring that spirit of regret. Here I go again. I make the same dumb mistake 14 times. I just regret I mean, of that regret. Romans 4.8. Uh, it's a powerful scripture. It says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute skin, sin. God does not charge sins to your account. He doesn't fault you or blame you because of what you've done. Ooh, preach it here. Some of, he doesn't even want you to blame yourself. See, you have to be careful of allowing Satan to use this spirit of blaming. Because what you do, you blame others for your situation. And you definitely be used by Satan. The moment you blame others, but pastor, it was because of them. No, that's the spirit of accusation. He does, you got to be careful of blaming other people for where you are or what occurred. Certain loves for you to focus on your failures, not your, not your savior. And when we start blaming people for where we're at, you know, sometimes husbands and wives do it and others, I wouldn't be in this situation. No, that's the spirit of, that's the spirit of regret. That's the spirit of blaming. That is not God. But pastor, that's a fact. It ain't the truth. The devil just want to get you to get to have that spirit of accusation. And now you got other people regretting. He wants you to focus on, on your failures or where you're at without God, not on your say on your savior. Whew, glory. And many of you right now, you know, we're, we're taking communion that you're going to have to repent for blaming other people where you are or, or, or your situation. Because that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's the spirit of the devil. That's the spirit of an accuser. You understand? We have one enemy. That's the enemy. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. We don't blame flesh and blood for where we are right now. And if we don't like the situation we're in. You don't blame the father of your child, the mother of your child for the situation. And I don't care what has occurred. We have a savior. And our focus should be only on God. Look at 12, Romans 12, 11. Revelations 12, 11. Come on. My time's running out. I hope you're getting something out of this. And they overcame him. Here's a scripture we're familiar with. By the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Notice it says they overcame. How did they overcame these accusations? Because Revelation 12, 10 said the accuser of the brother. He's, he's accusing you. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And they gave testimony of what the blood of the land has already done for them. Listen to me. And they gave testimony of what the blood of the land has already done for them. That's how you overcome them, through Jesus, through the blood, through the sacrifice that was made. When, when the spirit of regret comes upon you, you have to focus whew, on the blood, on Jesus, who's forgiven you hundreds of times, thousands of times for things you've done, things you don't even know you've done. Glory be to God. So let, let, let's, let's, let's fo just focus for a moment. Just listen to this word for a moment. Get your spiritual catches met open. We're not going to live a life of regret. It, it, it stops our fruitfulness. First John 1, 7, that's why I'm giving you the word. So is so the word. But if we walk in the light, that's walking with the Lord. As he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. <laughs> you got to remind yourself when that spirit of regret comes. You remind yourself when you, when, when you, you, you have feelings of what the mistakes you made. You got to remind yourself when regret comes that Jesus paid for every failure in your life. You understand? He says, and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed us from all sin. You understand? Jesus, <laughs> you understand? Every failure in your life 
He has forgiven you before and after you believe in him. Before you believed in him, he forgave you. And after you believe in him, he forgave you. He cleansed you. He paid for every failure. You know, John 10, 10 said, you know, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? He gave it to the world. He gave it to the world before you were saved. All the sins you committed, he's forgiven you. John, John, 1 John 2, 2 says that he is the appropriation for our sins and not for ours alone, but also for the sins of the whole world. In other words, appropriation means he paid for the sins of the whole world. See, people go to hell rejecting the payment plan, and that is Jesus. See, we don't have to sit up when you accepted Christ. God didn't ask you to re repent of all the sins you committed because the, the greatest sin you commit, you've committed is not accepting Jesus Christ, not accepting the payment for your sins. And if the, in a nutshell, that's really the only, that's the, that's the sin that you've missed. You, can say, you can't remember all the things you did before you had Christ, but you can repent of not accepting him. You're not accepting the payment. Glory be to God. And people go to hell because they reject the payment. Glory be to God. Thank God you haven't rejected it. Thank God you know who, only God, who he is. Glory be to God. You know, 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means when you make mistakes, I don't have to live in regret. I just have to come to him and confess what I did wrong. And he's faithful. He, you know what? He not only forgives me, he cleanses me. Cleanses me. He, he treats me. He treats me as if I never did it before. And if I've never did it before, I'm, I, don't, I don't have to have regret over my past. See, his power and desire to forgive and cleanse is for greater. You understand? It's far greater than any man's power and desire to sin. I'll repeat that again. God's power and desire to forgive and cleanse is far greater than any man's power and desire to sin. And his power is un unmeasurable. He sent his only son that you don't have to live in any regret on what you've done. Pastor, but Pastor, you know, I've done this 15 times. I've been trying to stay off drugs and I do it again. But he, he you listen to me. We don't have to have any regrets. I'm not teach, talking about a license to sin. I'm talking about a license to be free. We make mistakes. We have failure. Make fail. We make mistakes. We have failures. Yes, we sin. We commit sinful acts. We're not sinners, but we commit them. And we do this a lot as we develop our walk in him. But God will never punish you for, for, for learning how to walk in him. He's never going to punish How many of you got your tongue right? But man, it took a lot of wrong before it got right. But you made a commitment to change your tongue. You made a commitment not to worry. He's not going to beat you up. Jesus died, glory be to God, that the blood of lamb. He doesn't want you to regret, oh, my God, I told the Lord I would do this. This happened to me once. I just I just made a decision. I was going to fast. And see, I, at most of the time, I didn't understand the word. I thought I fast so God could move. No, I fast so I can get in his movement. But I thought I had to fast so... Here I, am, I made a commitment. I'm going to fast, and then somebody bought, you know, at work they bought they they start bring they bought the bought something to me that you know that they took time to make. And next thing I know, I was going to fast sweets. Next thing you know, I'm eating the cake. And man, I beat myself up. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I just beat myself up just tremendously. I regretted it. I couldn't get focused. I just asked the Lord, forgive me, please, please. And, you know, all of that. I just. I, I, because I didn't know the word of God. I didn't know about only God. But see, we have failures, but all failures are paid at the cross. That's where your failures were paid. You have to learn to leave the past and move forward. And regret always keeps you in the past. And the enemy likes to use regret just when you're about to have a breakthrough. To bring up something. Or you could, you could miss it. That, that that day before. You understand? We all have a past, including yesterday, but we do not live in the past anymore. 
I'll say that again. We all have a past, including what you did yesterday. But we do not live there in our past anymore. Come on, say that with me. I have a past, including what I did yesterday. But I do not live in my past anymore. See, the devil likes you to focus on your mistakes, like you to regret. Glory be to God. Come on, I'm closing out here. Philippians 3.13 says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but here's Paul talking. You know, Paul, <laughs> before we go to that scripture, I mean, Paul killed, killed Christians. You understand? And he wasn't that perfect when he got born again. But he says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. See, Paul is saying, I cannot allow my past to rob me of my future. See, your focus should always be on walking with, the, walking with a faithful God. Or your, your blessed future will be robbed. See, let me tell you, we will make mistakes. I don't think we arrive till Jesus come back. There's some things we'll never, once we overcome it and we know he's our source and it's only God, we'll stop making those same mistakes. But we can't go into regretting where we came from. You know, this is a scripture that holds me close to this more than anything. It's Romans 8, 28. And I'm reading from the New Living. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Thank God for him. See, he can use the good and the bad for your good. God will take your biggest mess and turn it into a masterpiece. He'll take that mess and turn it around. He's done it for many of you. You lost your job because you did stupid stuff. You didn't come in on time. You didn't follow the rules. And it was just a mess. You understand? And he turned that thing around for you, getting you a job with, with, with higher pay than you had before. I've seen people in a mess. Woo, and God turned that mess around for their good. Glory be to God. That's why it's only God. Woo, glory. You understand? Don't forget, it's God's desire for you to be fruitful. So he's going to do everything he has to make sure his plans happen in your life. Everything he has to make sure that. That's, that's what he's focused on. He said, I, I chose you. I ordained you. In Ephesians 2.10, he says, for we are God's masterpiece. Here we go. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us a long time before ago. The King James talked about that we that he has made us for to have good works. Glory be to God. I'm talking about good works. You understand? We've been created in him so 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 unto Jesus unto good works. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Be wise. So we, he has good plans for you. Awesome plans. He's faithful. He's always after you to produce fruit. He's always whew, coming after you. You understand to do things by faith that it's impossible that you could have done without trusting in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he wants you to see only God. He doesn't want you to live in regret over something you did before, which was factually true, but there's a truth that overrides regret. And don't you let people put regret on you, blame you for things. Don't receive it. That spirit of regret will rob you of your fruitfulness, rob you. Don't even receive it. Close your ears to it. You sometimes you said, you know, I should say, that was that's not me. That was the old Phil, not the new Phil. But you did it yesterday. The new Phil has arise. I will not live in regret. Ooh, glory be God. Only God can deliver. Only God can come through for me. Only God pardon my sins. Only God pardon my mistakes. He Jesus died and put a payment down for that. Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. One of my favorite scriptures, and yet, listen, is Micah 7, 8. It says, rejoice not against me, O my enemies. When I fall, I shall arise. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. When I live in dark, when I live in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. You understand? You know what the scripture is saying? Get up. Yeah, you made a mistake. Get up. Get up right now. That's what the Lord is speaking to you. Come on and get up. I'm talking to some of you today. Get up. Get on up right now. This is your time. Woo. Get up for him. He's worthy. Jesus died so you can get up over every mistake. You don't want the enemy rejoicing against you because you're living in regret and you won't because you're going through the mistakes that you ain't worthy. Man, you know, so many people preach that God is just a, a God that beats you down that hate you. I don't know where we get that wrong teaching from. You know, it's like God is using COVID-19, you know, because he's mad with America. No. You show me in the scripture in the New Testament where that is. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. God already prophesied this thing would happen. But in the midst of the mess, we arise. In the midst of the situation, we become the salt of the earth. So people can know there's a living God. How are they going to know a living God if we're acting like the world? Yeah, we make mistakes, but the world needs to see us get on up. The world needs to see us arising. Come on and rise today. You know, when I go through situations like that, and you know, that this, this because God has good works for you. I love 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7 and 8. Listen to me. Because what I do in times of this nature, on many occasions, I sow a seed just to get back at the devil. It says, it says, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now listen to verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. In the midst of the situation, I'll sow a seed. <laughs> Woo! Just to let the devil know, my trust is in God. You understand? Because he has good works planned for me. And I just want to let you know, I don't give grudgingly, don't give other pressure. I'm just letting him know I'm coming back at him for trying to get me, you understand, to trying to rejoice because I, I made a mistake. The Lord is your light. For some of you today, the Lord is your light. Glory be to God. He is your light. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. No regret. Only God. Why don't you say this with me? Come on. Glory be to God. Come on. Get your spiritual catches out. Glory be to God. I'm at the end. Come on. Gather around. Grab husband and wife. Grab hands together. Say this with me. I'm here. I can't hear you. I'm here to bear fruit. My fruit is to remain. Only God. Only my focus is only on my real helper, my real provider. Only my focus is on only the real deliverer. Only my focus is on my only doctor who's never lost the case. I refuse to receive the spirit of regret, the spirit of blame, no matter what I have done in my life. My past is my past and does not belong in my present. I declare this by faith in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo, I hope you got something out of this today. Come on, it's communion time. We're going to take communion. Glory, let's get, let's get this right. Come on, let's get this right. Let's get communion. I need you to go pull the elements together, the bread, uh, whatever you're using for, for, the, for the wine. It, you know, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's what you use. You can get a piece of bread. You can use water. But uh, what, what we're going to do, as, as we minister, I'm, I'm going to have one of the ministers, Minister Rhonda is going to minister in song. Listen to the song she's, as you get ready for communion. 
Glory be to God. Let's get in the right frame right now. Glory be to God. Let's get in that right frame. I'll be right back. Praise God. Hallelujah for that word. Thank you, Lord. sown in your heart today, that when you leave here today, you can walk in freedom, walk in the rest, 
of your Savior. As we take communion today, you know, he says, you know, this is, we're doing this in remembrance of him. Now, some of you, you made some decisions today. You're listening to this word that you're not going to have any more regret, no more of your past. Let's take communion over this, that he's going to be the only God, the only source I have, the only doctor I have. Glory be to God. The only. Because you don't want a preaching word to come in and you just forget it after today. <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if you open your Bible, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23, it says, For I have received of the, uh, excuse me, 1123. For I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took, his, took it the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lamb, blood of the Lord. But let a man or woman examine themselves. So let them eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. You know, we're judging ourselves. Listen, the only reason we're taking this is putting him in remembrance. Because sometimes we forget who our source is, who our God is. And as you take communion today, for some of you, it, it could be for many reasons. And so let's break the bread. Glory be to God. I broke. And why don't you say this with me? Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you took every mistake, every failure, every loss that I ever had. You took all sickness and all pain, physically and emotionally, at the cross just for me. You took poverty, you took lack, and the pain of not having enough right at that cross. So today, as I eat this bread, I put you in remembrance that you are my healer, you are my deliverer, you are faithful, and you will never fail me. In Jesus' name, let's eat the bread. And let's drink the cup. And before you drink it, the cup, I want you to lift it up before you. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter what it is. Lift that cup up because we're doing this in remembrance of him. Say this with me. Oh, the blood of Jesus that cleanses me of all unrighteousness. Oh, the blood that was shed for any mistake or sinful act that I ever committed. Oh, the blood which delivers me and protects me and protects my family. Oh, the blood, only God designed the blood of Jesus for me and my household. I drink this cup in remembrance of whom I serve, of whom really loves me, of whom I can depend on, Jesus Christ. Let's drink the cup. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Who the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We did this in remembrance of him. You know? in remembrance of him, the most powerful thing. Woo, thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Good time to worship him in your giving. And I can't think of a better scripture than 2 Corinthians 9, 7. 
Because if the enemy's been after you, he's been attacking you, he's been trying to rob you of your fruit, today is a time to sow. If you're a tither, praise God. You understand? You believe. See, a tither knows only God. Only God is my source. And there's things that a tither repeat, receives, you understand? It takes, it takes confidence in God. It takes only God to be a tither. Only him. But 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have in all sufficiency and all things may abound to every good work. Glory be to God. And listen to me carefully. Don't you, you sow your seed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Sow your seed. It's so important for you to put that seed in the ground. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's, it's important for you. Let me pray for you. Father, as we give today, we don't give grudgingly. We don't give because under pressure. We, we give cheerfully. Our joy is in us. We love you and we thank God for you. We love you, Lord, and thank God that he provides for us, that he's faithful to us. And as we give today, it opens the door for our good works. That not only is our provisions taken care of, but we'll have more left over so God can use it toward the good works that he has planned for us. We receive this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as you look on here, and I'm, I'm talking to many of you today, you understand? You, you'll, you'll see how to sow in Wilmington Christian Center Church. You understand? You go into our website or you mail it, mail it to us. You put that seed in the ground today. You don't put it by thinking. You put it by doing something. Glory be God. And we thank God. So as you prepare your seed to sow, glory be God, we're just ministering song with Minister Walter as he ministers song with you. Be right back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Time to sow your seed. Our God is faithful. He has cleansed us by this blood, washed us with the water of his word. My God, every praise belongs to our God. So come on and help me sing this. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. One accord. With one accord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To our God. To our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. To our God. Sing glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. It's to our God. God. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. To, it's to our God. Yeah. Come on, everybody, sing it higher. Every praise. To our God. To our God. Every word of worship. Every yeah. word of worship. What's the word of Lord?
Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Walt. Every praise is to my God. Hallelujah. Praise him. I, yes, I said praise him. Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. Hallelujah. We pray that we appreciate everyone who sowed a seed into this ministry. You just don't know. Man, you, you just don't know how blessed it is that, you know, it, the, of you sowing your seed. We don't take it lightly. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Did you get something out of this word today? You need to watch this broadcast again. Hear it over and over because faith cometh by hearing. All you have to do is go on our webpage and just hit it again and you can watch this over and over again to make sure you get that that only God and get that spirit of regret off of you. We got some announcements for you. Glory be to God as we end, uh, end the service today. Glory be to God. Why don't you receive Sister Carmen? Hallelujah. All right. All right. So yes, um, want to remind everyone, make sure you're sharing with your friends and family that every Sunday at 10 a.m., Wilmington Christian Center Church, that we're having service. So thank you for signing in and tuning in with us today and hearing that awesome word of God. But make sure you also share that we are every Sunday having our service at 10. Also, every Tuesday, we have corporate prayer from 1230 in the afternoon. And if you're not sure of how do I find out the information, make sure you go to our page, WCCCW.org, uh, which has all of our contact information. Every Wednesday, we have midweek morning prayer from 6 a.m. to 6.15. Also, on Thursdays, we have our online Deeper Life Bible study that begins at 7 p.m. There's a phone number to call. Again, you'll find that at the webpage, WCCCW.org. Also, if you're in need of any... Uh, if you're in need of prayer, help, assistance, just, you know, someone to talk to, someone to give you some insight on, hey, I need some help with food. Definitely, when you reach out to our page, there's a contact section on that page. Put your information in. If it's not someone in terms of uh, pastor, it will be someone from our ministerial staff to help you um, in answering the questions that you have. So that's it for announcements. Have a great day. Thank you, Sister Carmen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want you to make this your week. This is the first day of the new week. And I want you to remember that yet God will cause everything to work together for the good of those who love him. And I want you to put your love in him. Notice he'll cause these things to happen. Whether good or bad, he's going he's gonna to make sure it turns for your good. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, if you have any questions or anything, as Sister Carmen said, why don't you contact us? You understand the contact information is on the on right out on our Facebook page right now. You can see it live. You know, we love you. You know, this Tuesday, I want to see you on. Last Tuesday, we had some technical problems, but we got those fixed. So this Tuesday at 1230, you know, we're going to stand. We're standing against this COVID-19. We're standing against this calamity in this country. You know, so the devil triumphs when a believer is silent. So maybe you take your lunch break at 1230. Come on and join us for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 the max as we as we stand on the word of God. Parents, get your kids together. Get on, look on our web page if you, or probably on our Facebook page also about getting your kids on that Zoom, on that Zoom page so they can be involved in, in, in learning the word of God and you, making the word first in their life. I thank God for you parents for putting godly things in your children. Our job is to assist you. Glory be to God. We'll assist you because faith coming by hearing for them too and hearing by the word of God. If they're five, six, seven, up to 18 years, 17, 18, they need the word. You understand? They need the word. Hallelujah. They need to know the only voice and that voice is the voice of God. We love you. We thank God for you. Uh, you understand? We love you. So say this with me. I am blessed. I am highly favored. I am righteous, never forsaken. My seed will never beg bread. That's why I can boldly say Satan is defeated. Darkness is dispelled totally from my life because Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. We love you. Have a great and prosperous Sunday. Good things are happening already and an awesome week. We'll see you this week. God bless you.